So yeah, just um, we're talking about joy and celebration today. So I thought my background should look joyous. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone. We're just gonna give everyone a few minutes to be able to land. Barzana, where are you from? Los Angeles. Ah, oh, we have the the SoCal team. Of course, I would I would use my Los Angeles background. <laughs> well, if anyone wants to join me tonight at USC, I'm going. Uh, Ryan's just leaving, uh, says that um, the cops have pulled back. They just took the tents away, but um, it's just starting to grow or, you know, super early compared to some of the other universities. But we were there on Saturday, Sunday and it was a quite friendly crowd when people were super grateful and um, excited that we were there. And then just for the Los Angeles folks, we had a huge victory last night. We packed the Santa Monica City Council um, and uh, they had said, no, we're not gonna consider a ceasefire resolution. So we packed the city council and everybody, the most amazing testimonies, beautiful, heartfelt, like Palestinian, Jewish, you know, long-term Santa Monicans and, 10 minutes after the meeting, city council member said, okay, I'll bring it up for a vote next meeting. So hey, love the peace economy. <laughs> and it was so local peace economy, just the heart and the love and the connections and the diversity and the holding space for every voice. Um, so yeah, it was super cool. Uh, just gonna mute some of the folks that might be making. Um, all right, so we've got a couple more minutes to let people join. I was just sharing a story. Um, great to see everybody. Uh, it's you know just to remind everybody the roller coaster of emotions that uh, we we're learning to ride the roller coaster every day since we moved from the celebration of the students at Columbia speaking out to the $100 billion being voted for what, you know, more war, like being able to like move between, you know, super excitement to super depression to all the things that we're having to feel these days. And it's, you know, one of the reasons we come together is that we can, so we can be reminded that there are sane people and that um, we are working for a future and that all of that is noise, um, very real and very devastating and that we can't let it crush us. We can't let it shut us up. We can't let us it turn us off and we need to stay engaged because we are building a beautiful future and it is happening. It's messy and um, they're trying to crush it. You know, when I first started the local peace economy, I used to say, you know, um, for the coming, you know, we need to build local peace economies for the coming uh, devastations that happen out of inequality, that happen out of climate change, and that happen from fascism. And people thought, oh, you're just being exaggerating. Well, y'all, <laughs> If nobody, if you aren't watching, if you don't understand that we are now living in fascism, you know, it's always like people are waiting for it to happen when it's happening. It is happening that you can go to universities and close down students that are telling the truth, that are observing reality and calling for peace and justice and they're getting arrested. That's called fascism. That's what it is. And people don't understand what's happening. You know, it's like, super interesting for all of us that you know didn't live through a holocaust to witness what it looks like when it's happening because i think i mean me as a young person i always wondered how does this happen how can this actually take place i don't understand so here we are inside of it happening answering those questions for us and instructing us you know that yes it was silence yes it was complicity um, and and propaganda and and hearts and minds being owned by fear and hate. So we're getting to watch it, you know, in real time. 
Um, so in this field climate also though, is letting us see why the local peace economy is so important and where it's playing a role. And, you know, what I always say is like the local is where it, the movement happens from. And it, you know, so it's Columbia, so it's Harvard, so it's MIT. And interestingly enough, this is happening at elite schools. This isn't happening in community colleges. This is happening at elite schools. So this is not, you know, this is, students that are educating themselves to be who are in the, you know, kind of the management sector of the structure, who are saying, I am not aligned with this structure anymore. And that is quite frightening to those in power. That is quite frightening to the structure. So also to recognize what that is to the violent structure. Like these are the students they are counting on to carry forward the oppressive, violent, um, you know, uh, structure, economy. They're, these are the students that they were counting on. And so uh, this is really profound. This moment is super profound on so many, so many levels. And Emily and I are talking about like having a, a webinar that kind of teaches us because it's when we say the words, it's one thing, but when you're in the living of it and why is a local peace economy so important? Here's, yeah, book burn, thank you, um, Joy, yes. Book banning, <laughs> exactly, attacks on the library, the first indicator of fascism. So. Um, it would be great from this community to be making a list of those first moments of fascism and how they happen and enjoy. It'd be great to have you on the webinar to talk about that and looking at fascism and saying, here we are. Um, and just the reminder that it happens locally. It's where you can affect people is local. It's look, uh, APAC knew that. What did APAC do early on is affect the laws like I think 26 states and counties and cities and localities and businesses and universities, that's where they went to affect the fascism that would be present now. So, you know, the fight is on, it's going to be ugly and it's going to take all of us to hold each other through what is going to be very, very hard to witness. Um, and so, you know, that it just continues to take us back to where the work is, is it cultivating our local peace economies and building the containers of care, community. Um, and so here we are today about joy and celebration. Um, so anyway, um, uh, back to you, Emily. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Um, hi, everyone. For those of you who've joined since we've started, I'm Emily, I'm the Local Peace Economy Coordinator at Code Pink. And an invitation to continue to introduce yourself in the chat, if you haven't already, and where you're calling in from. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me. And as... As we often do here, um, before we get into the topic more deeply, we'll start with a grounding. Um, and this week, I wanted to start with a chapter from The Prophet by Halil Gibran, who's a Lebanese-born, Lebanese-American um, writer. Um, and the chapter is called Joy and Sorrow. And I wanted to bring this in tonight because we talk a lot about the importance of grief and grieving in the local peace economy and the importance of that work. Um, and just wanted to ground us in the reality that jo the joy, as we talk about joy and celebration, does not bypass grief. And it's actually deeply connected to it. And um, obviously we're holding so much grief and sorrow right now with the genocide in Palestine and that violence happening from the war machine around the world. Um, and yeah, we're holding that alongside our, our joy and celebration um, as we dive into that tonight. So again, this is um, Joy and Sorrow from a chapter from the prophet. Then a woman said, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the self-same well from which your laughter rises is oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow ca carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the loot that soothes your spirit, the very wood that was hollowed with knives. When you are joyous, look deep into your heart and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart 
and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say, joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and his silver, needs must your joy or your sorrow rise or fall. I know there's a lot there and I'll put a link to that in the chat because it's, I know I, it's something I have to revisit constantly. Um, I'll put that link in the chat now. Um, great. So with that, um, I'd love to invite anyone who wants to share what's been alive for them over the last two weeks. Um, if you were here with us two weeks ago, or just over the last weeks, months, or what brought you here today, um, as you've been um, diving into the local peace economy workbook, or the how whichever ways you're engaging with local peace economy in your own life and in your community, what's been alive for you. What have you noticed? Where have you noticed resistance coming up? Um, yeah, opening it up for anyone who wants to share. And also, if you're new, if you could just uh, raise your hand and you know introduce yourself and where you're from. Some of us know each other and have been sharing intimately. So if you're new, um, please introduce yourself. Uh, Raylan. Hi, um, my name is Raylan Joyce. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I've been wanting to join you each time I would not get along to it. Tonight I'm here, so I'm very glad. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Fern. I'm not new, but I have something that I'd like to share later whenever but um, you can ask, newcomers are always important because we identify with them. I've been <laughs> the newcomer every day. <laughs> so Fern, you can do, go now and then we'll, uh, the newcomers can join as it feels comfortable for them. Okay, well, um, I go to um, Jewish Voice for Peace, the three o'clock thing every day, just to find out what's going on. And um, I, I, I have a history um from way back um that relates to the wars and and um when i share it with code pink code pink or some of the other places it's accepted and very important um because this war didn't start with october 7th but when i share it with jvp they're just interested in what we can do to um stop these wars and i understand that you know and i understand that you can't analyze it or find out what to do you just have to stop the war but um it kind of um turns me off but um i i don't know how to communicate also i'm learning how to communicate because my story you know goes way back these wars didn't happen by by accident and a lot of it is related to my history but so i don't understand that part and i understand don't analyze you know utilize too but anyhow that's what's on my mind so thank you for letting me share <laughs> that's you, just my thought it's a very important share and um so i think it's i'm gonna start like the the first place it's important is that we're all struggling with reality right now. You know, it's because it's so painful, everyone is struggling with it and we struggle with it in different ways. Part of that struggle is trying to hold on to anything we know um, because we need to be grounded. And it's why we talk about a local peace economy because being rooted is so important because if we're not rooted, we can be used. So part of our like superhuman instinct is to hold on to what we know when the ground is shaking. So 
we, you know, as we say, it could be even in our anti-war work, it's just to listen and recognize where someone else is and be relational in that, you know? So if someone is uncomfortable or they're holding into what they're doing, sometimes it's just to bring the local peace economy into the community. So I do that all the time. Um, you know, like what I'll do is witness from the local peace economy lens and in a bigger conversation, bring up where it's feeling transactional, bringing up where it's feeling like eight, bringing up where it's othering, like think of all the 23 things that are the war economy and list, you know, the more you play with them, the more you see them in the room, right? The more, I, I'm sure people like, the more you do it, it's like, you're always like, whoa, <laughs> it starts to almost feel confronting because all of a sudden you're feeling confronted by all this like dark shit that you was always there, but that toxicity is more present for you. So Look, I do this on a on a code pink team call every week. That's transactional. That you know, I can do it because we're practicing it, but we are all practicing the war economy. So when you feel that like shutdown or whatever, it's to listen, which is like the local peace economy tool, right? It's to listen and respond. So it's a good place for you to practice what it is to respond to reaction, you know, to shut down, to, because, um, first of all, um, we're, you know, the first thing about that started local peace economy is we are not going to end war till we end the war economy. War just serves the war economy. So we just witnessed that, that, you know, 80% of voters that are Democrat say no to funding, no to war, a ceasefire. So we just watched the system vote a hundred billion dollars to more war, even as Biden says today, we're sending $60 billion, but we're still not gonna win in Ukraine. That means more Ukrainians are gonna die and we're just burning up your tax dollars. So you can know that that's true, but it's a long way for somebody else to know that. They've got to come there. Because, you know, as I say, as I, as we say at Kuping, it's like we don't want to be used by the war machine. If all you are doing is trying to end war, you will be worn out. You will be crushed because war won't end until we end the war economy. So for a, a code pinker, what we know is every day that we scratch at power, we are victorious. We have scratched them. They're making other people bleed. We're making them wake up to what they're doing. You have to like have the activism relational to what's possible. Because if you think this activism is going to stop, it's fucking six months. We've been active. The truth, the truth, activism is not stopping a genocide. And we have to keep doing it. And we have to be a peace economy because we have to take care of each other. We have to make room to grieve. We have to make room to celebrate. We have to make room to building the community that is, so both have to happen at the same time. And I would say JVP does a really good job of that, but not like articulately. Having the call at three o'clock every day is just like having this call every other week. It's a place to come together. It's a place to feel human when the world sounds, is insane, you know? So that's local peace economy. And if somebody feels like all I can do is be in the streets, then, that's what they'll do until they can't. Do you know, you got to let somebody run out their passion and go until it doesn't work for them. And, to, you know, like people have to come to their wisdom. Everybody here came to their wisdom in a certain way. And we can't force people beyond the wisdom that then pivots you. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you've got to come to that wisdom um, really in the moment and go, okay, I have to be able to do both. I have to be able to nourish my community, be, be, be rooting it, be rooting myself, because I can see that this thing is, you know, a, a war, you know, this war is because of the war economy, because of the system that is got to be it. The way we get rid of it is we, from the bottom, we build another. Now looking at Colombia is a good way to look at um, an expression of that. So 
here we are, like, if you look at Colombia, it is community, it is feeding each other, it is culture, it is dancing, it is singing, it is caring, it is grieving. It is all the things that a local peace economy is inside of a local peace economy that, that is being created on the quad. You know, it's just like immediately that's what gets created. That's what life is. That's what in resistance, what happens is you're closer to life and you create, you create it. That's what's happening. But in the face of life expressing itself in its beauty, the war economy is fucking frightened. Sorry for my language. It is so frightened by that, that it has to crush it. Because if you let a little bit of life happen, what it knows is people will be attracted to it. And so what's happening is people are pouring out of their homes to be there in support of life. No matter what, no matter that the police are there, no matter that it's three o'clock in the morning. No, So let let us be witnessing what's happening and watching that you know when it's beautiful the machine is not going to be happy i was uh you know emily and i were just talking today and as i look at the places where the united states goes to bomb and destroy their their peace economies el salvador you know nicaragua uh, ch you know, Chile, um, uh, Vietnam, uh, you know, Korea, like it pivoted Korea from a local peace economy to capitalism on steroids. Um, that's what South, South Korea is, capitalism on steroids. It's very detrimental to the humans that live there. Um, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Libya, um, Venezuela, Cuba, now China, the Philippines. When you look at where the wars are being waged, it's where the local peace economy has been nourishing life. And, and certainly we could look at Africa first. I mean, US isn't the worst colonizer of Africa, but if you look at what happened when the colonizers came to Africa, they were local peace economies that thrived. And the raping of, the, of Africa, the most rich continent of resources, um, you know, that's pre all the wars that 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 was colonialism. And it was a war, you know, like if you look at the genocide of the the Belgians to, to the Congo or um, I mean, there's so many examples in so many of the African countries of what colonialism did. So um, it's, you know, we're trying to bring back the wisdom of indigenous communities that where life thrived and where life could, you know, had an on wrap to the future. Because we were witnessing that the war economy is taking us off a cliff and could end life on the planet. Um, the planet will be fine, but it could end life on the planet. And that has happened in places um, that has happened. It's not that it wouldn't be the first time in places where life has just ended because humans have been so devastating. Um, you know, which has happened in, in history. So Fern, it's about witnessing and saying, okay, can I enter this conversation and just bring something up? Like, why don't we just all take a breath and, you know, connect to what is the response, not the reaction, or where can we bring joy and celebration or whatever it is we're we're turning into little toning forks of the peace economy that we can take wherever we are in the practice of it we become the tuning fork for it and so that in any conversation you're in you can bring that reflection without a need for it to be anything except maybe one person to be resonating with it so it's a slow resonation that doesn't need to proselytize except drop little healthy drops into conversations where people actually will be attracted to it because in this we're stressed you know that's why it's like in the stress we we all are going to be responding in ways all of us not i mean every single one of us and we're here to help each other as we try to witness this profound moment in time and be as nimble yet rooted as open, you know, as uh, full of capacity while caring for each other, you know, so 
it, being able to stay in the resilience while the war economy is trying to crush us in every way it can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for asking the question, Fern. Thanks. Any other reflections on what you've been doing, what you've been learning? This is the part where we we want to learn from each other. Yes, Joy, not just burning our tax dollars, but ruining the biosphere or is not green. Dominique, is that you? Yes, it's me. Hi. So what I've been doing in the last couple of weeks, actually last Monday, which was Earth Day, you know, I'm an artist and activist and I bring the two together with, and spirit because my path is spiritual. So I've in the past done ritual performances for Iraq 20 years ago, last year for Ukraine. But this time around, I just can't do it for Israel, Palestine. I mean, it's been so hard, but I've been wanting to do. So it was Earth Day. And I, you know, I just, Earth is my beloved mother. And I asked for comfort and advice. And she told me, you know, I can't flourish with all these wars. So I did, I was able to do a, a, a performance on the Plaza of Santa Fe. My, my piece is called Tears of the World. I have this huge bowl of water representing the tears of the world. And, uh, you know, it was very hard physically because I'm 82 years old, but it was really a good place because, you know, speaking of joy and sorrow, you know, there is, the, so my piece was, we have tears of joy for the beauty of the earth and we have tears of sorrow for the wars besieging the earth. So that's what I was able to do this week. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Do you have a do you have a video or something that you could well, share? Well, I, 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 you know, I, I have never, even though I've been at it for 40 years, I never document my work, but a friend of mine took some photographs I'm just going through and uh, I can send it to you. Uh, should I send it to your personal address or? Yes, please. Yeah, because you know, I, I I love you. I love this group. I keep coming because I feel this is great. You know, even though I've been at these things for a long time, but I just love being here with you all. So, so Dominique, this is really important because, um, you know, it all happens locally, but we we seed each other from you know the the mycelial connection that we are right. as we're together and so in this mycelial connection we give and we give each other inspiration and hope and ideas so one of the things that everybody should know is that if you are doing something locally you can reach out to emily at peace economy mm -hmm. at org and say I'm going to do this and Emily can send an email to the people in the community to let them know and Great. so and even you know we can put a, an uh, an event up on Code Pink um, because we want it and then Emily would want to tell the story and share it on Instagram and because it's all inspiration and what you just said you know the tears of joy of the earth and the tears you know it's like that fits everywhere and everyone um, also, we have a big community in Santa Fe, so um, we would we would you know if you want to do it again, <laughs> um, we yeah, could, so. we could work on building it up. And I bet Joan Halifax would you know they go once a week to the square. I know, I know, I've gone there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. we could ask Joan to include it in her weekly event. And well, I I know Joan very well, and I actually. You know, I'm kind. I never promote myself or anything, but I, I sent her the uh, press release on the day I did it. You know, and she's in Japan doing yeah. something. But yeah. I know I have to learn to be a little more because it's not for myself. It's for the earth. It's for peace. You know, peace has been my, my yeah. thing for all these years. So, yeah. Thank so, you for the encouragement. So, so I'll send it to Emily. So so. I mean, but this also applies to everyone. We're here to support and we've got, you know, 
a, a list of 200,000 people that if it is local, we can go beyond our local peace economy people and into the bigger list. Um, so, and, uh, you know, Dominique, my son is um, a I know. Yeah, so I, I could totally get the whole community to, and I want to say something really important. Culture workers, of which you are one, <laughs> are the forefront of this movement because culture changes from the culture workers. So it's why it's important to weave it into all of our work. But mm. your work is at the forefront. You're, you're, it's like the vanguard is, at, is the culture workers. So, you know, being able to tell the story, being able to affect our hearts. And so I want to say that that's what we're talking about today, which is joy and celebration and where that place where we identify with humanity at its, at its juicy core that includes, includes grief you know, that you've done that in your piece of art. So if you could please hook up with Emily and we'll turn it into something that we can share on the Code Pink Pink Tank and also as a tool for others to use. I mean, every day is Earth Day. Let's remember that. Um, we don't celebrate yeah. it on Earth Day. We celebrate it every day. And we make sure mm -hmm. to make excuses for celebrating it every day. Um, you know, uh, genocide, equal, uh, genocide equals equals ecocide was our Code Pink message over the weekend. Um, so yes, culture is so important. We're so happy that you're, you're here because <laughs> you, you, you know, bringing that back into us reminds us like, how are we engaging with the culture workers in our community? Because if they're not culture workers, they've just been co-opted by the war economy and re remembering which is which, you know, remembering that the war economy is co-opting everything it can and that we're following into the sinews to find life and, it, you know, be in relationship with it, raise it, bring it in connection with us and the community. So uh, it's like, it, you know, it's about intimate. It's about the authentic. It's about the curiosity. It's about the relational. Um, and it sounds like you were all of that um, for Earth Day. So please, and for everyone, culture is is that leading edge of of this work. It was um, it's so important. And um, you know, we have a whole section that we're building for the website on that. Um, as you saw in the book, we have we touch it a little bit. But um, yeah, anybody else want to share? It's all you know. The, you're rich in in sharing today. All right, well, so I'm gonna move forward on oh. talking about, oh, did somebody? Oh yeah, hi, this is Andy. I don't hi, know Andy. if you can see me. Hi, I was just gonna share a couple things really quick that I'm doing locally uh, with my peace economy here. I'm very fortunate. I have a wonderful group of very strong women that I've been in a group with uh, book clubs and whatnot for a couple years. years. Uh, we're starting. Uh, one of them has a large property. We're actually starting a co-op garden um, and with getting chickens and just kind of seeing where that's going to grow. And then um, I'm starting to garden at home, kind of stepping away from that consumerism. Uh, we've started a clothing exchange. So rather than buying clothes, exchanging with one another. Um, we've also talked about um, as, I don't know, a business or whatnot, but starting a no buy store. Um, to compete directly, I guess, with something like Goodwill or Salvation Army where people can donate and then people can just pick it up and take it. Like there's enough that's already existing that we can just exchange those um, with one another. Uh, and then I've also started a group in my neighborhood where uh, we have our first meeting um, next weekend. Uh, again, just a bunch of really great women that I've known for years that we're going to get together and share skills. Um, you know, I, I knit, um, I do other things. And so we're just going to lean on each other and share those skills with one another and give our children an opportunity to, you know, connect and play with one another. And then, um, trying to think of what else I've been up to with those. That's just kind of been it, um, more recently. What city are you in? in I'm in Centerville, Virginia. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, these are all fantastic. I think our next 
call is about the needs and offers market, right, Emily? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, next time we're going to share about needs and offers, okay. um, which came out of the local peace economy about six or seven years ago and has developed into a whole big tool globally um, mm -hmm. that you all might like. Um, and also, like early on, we started some of these uh, free. I started a free store in, in Venice, and oh, awesome! Uh, so what I ended up doing was driving everyone to Facebook a Marketplace to for free because then you're pulling in more people, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to have a structure, and you have a tool that serves it. Um, right. because it does become very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. um, so just wanted to to say that, and I think. Um, also something that happened to me that made me sad and pull back. Um, and also uh, we had another member, Judy Wicks did it in uh, Philadelphia mm -hmm. was, um, we found out that people were coming in, taking things, selling them and serving a, a drug habit that, um, that, um, broke my heart. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that I, I, I did, I, I thought, you know, that could be a potential, not the drug habit aspect of it, but that people may come in and pick up stuff to sell it. And I figured if that's what they needed to do, that that, yeah, would, no, be, that's, that's that totally would be okay. Fine, right? <laughs> it's already existing. At least we're not creating something new. The right. drug habit aspect is, is so it happened for both of us. Um, we were both able to help out the people that were, you know, um, eventually um, we were able to get them into treatment and stuff. But it, that's what I'm saying. It's it's it takes a lot of um, capacity. Yeah. Um, so starting with the um, I've known other communities that have started with marketplace and saying just share here, build the community. They started a local peace economy on Facebook, and then like here's the sharing place. Okay. Then it expands it to a bigger audience. Okay. And then you can um, teach more people and, and we would share in the sharing of it, the, the, the philosophy behind it and the why, and um, awesome. that that's how they built their community a little more. Okay. Um, but to do it as a, as a store, um, I, I wore myself out. <laughs> 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 I got a local landlord to give me a storefront. Um, oh, wow. But I want to say it was fun. All okay. last week. I have no regrets. But, okay. Um, and next week we'll learn about the offers and needs market that makes it more like a once a month thing. Okay. Which, um, so like out of the everyday thing, it moved to a once a month thing. And I think was more sustainable for everyone. Okay. Yeah. That. Th thank you so much for all of that. I really appreciate that. Sure. And next week we'll get to hear about offers and needs because I think it's super cool and people love it. And it's a really good way um, and building the local and because it engages people beyond, you know, and so, um, it, you know, it's the thing about local peace economy is like the needs. Once you identify the need, we live in so much anxiety, right? I don't even know what the need is that causes the anxiety. And then mm -hmm. when you break it down and you actually talk about needs, you, you quell the anxiety and you actually make stuff happen that creates this interconnected tissue that um, makes us sane um, mm -hmm. and loved at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know even just with my neighborhood, I've just just having the conversation around it. You know, I've already um, loaned out my tree trimmer and helped a few neighbors trim their trees, and then 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 I've used their power washer. So it's like, don't buy things if 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 you need something, come and ask me first, mm -hmm. um, and then let's find it for you because I'm sure somebody has it, and then we can just um, use what we have. So. And creating that habit in people, you know, right. if we, if we look at why we're this way, you know, we've been preyed on by our, not our laziness, but uh, it's like, it speeds everything up. And so you have to do things faster. So you can't be relational. It's like the way the system works, right? And so just slowing yourself down into how much more fun it is and where the magic happens, mm -hmm. like taking the magic out of our lives. Yeah. And, and so it's really like, that's where the magic synchronicities moments where life just pops and mm -hmm. you just go, Oh my God, and you know, like, this is I, <laughs> I totally agree. I'm talking more with my neighbors, you know, just having these kinds of conversations, getting their ideas, talking about their anxieties, you know, with, 
food prices. And then I'm sharing recipes that I make that, you know, you can do seven meals for 50 cents a meal, like, and I'm canning and doing those things. And so it's just um, having those conversations and, and putting it out there and people will share. And then it's just seeing how, what you can contribute to that to maybe ease that and yeah. then get that connection. Awesome. Well, we need you to write a piece for the pink tank because um, you, you know, you're doing so many layers. It would be fun you know, Emily can do and turn it into something, but um, it's yeah. great to hear the layers of things you're doing. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Thank you. I think we're going to forget about talking about joy and celebration today. We're going to start, I think, just by you all sharing. I mean, so joy and celebration are core to local peace economy, and they have happened since humans became. It's like before language is joy and celebration and it's across the world and and so we've all experienced it in some way or another it's been part of our community our culture our family our our church you know like whatever so when we i want to break in because i think one of the favorite parts of this call is breaking into the small groups and getting to talk to each other um i want to break into where is your experience of joy and celebration that's really nourished you? Um, so we'll start there because once you touch that together, you'll have some ideas of what you wanna bring to your community um, because though that is the lifeblood of how we deal with grief, how we deal with pain, how we deal with violence, like, you know, and they exist um, in all these things. And the war economy works very hard to separate us from it, to make it narrow it. I mean, when you think of the individualism that is the disease of the United States, it's like so much has been taking us away from those community experiences of joy and celebration and even just singing, you know, just being in choirs and singing and, you know, the things that are corely human, just joyous and celebratory. So I want to put everybody in a breakout room. Um, let me just uh see um, four okay i'm gonna put you in groups of three and um what um emily you want to say what the questions are yes um the questions and i'll put these in the chat and we'll broadcast it as well what are the memories you have about joy and celebration in your life what has lasted about that memory where have you brought it into your life and how can you bring it to your community? And again. All right, we'll, uh, we'll post it in the broadcast and then uh, we'll see you in 15 minutes. Just a reminder, please mute yourself if you aren't already since we're probably off mute. I see a couple smiles, so I hope it was a, a joyous conversation. <laughs> Um, is that everyone? I think that's everyone, right, Jody? Yeah. Great. Um, well, welcome back. Um, today, unfortunately, we won't have time for a large group share out, but um, but yeah, again, hope your conversations were nourishing, joyous, and I loved hearing so many voices today um, before the breakout rooms. Um, we can share maybe for if there's anything you want to share um, in two weeks, we can, you know, feel free to bring that with you as well. Yeah, maybe it would be great when we come together in two weeks to share your reflections, not only what happened from the local group, and, but how that seeded something that happened in the two weeks, you know, when we see each other next time. So we'll start out there. Yeah. And um, we had, we wanted to give you all a way to connect um, between the calls. You know, a lot can happen in two weeks and, and ways to, um, you know, you can share pictures, share inspiration, inspire each other, stay connected. Um, a couple um, people who come to the calls regularly, regularly have been asking for that. And so the two ways that we could do that are either a listserv, which is email, or a WhatsApp group. And so I wanna take a poll of the people here today of what you prefer. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna try putting up a white whiteboard um, did you want to do that, Jody, or would you like me to? Um, is it up? Uh, not on my end. Uh... There we go. 
Okay, so you'll see two columns here, WhatsApp and listserv. And if you go to the um, the T on the left-hand side, um, or this sidebar here, I'm not actually sure if you can see my mouse, but um, the T, that'll give you the option to type uh, text. So you can type your name and drag it under which column you want. Um, so let's explain a WhatsApp is okay. you on WhatsApp. It's a, it's kind of a listserv, but on your phone, on WhatsApp, you can share photos, you can share ideas, you can share links or a listserv where it might be more comfortable for some people. Um, so <laughs> we'll see where the most people are. <laughs> it's everybody all over the place. <laughs> Your WhatsApp is more like texting, like it's closer to texting and listserv would be more of an email. Oh, I so I see Dominique under listserv. I see Tom under listserv. I see Fer Ferranza um, flying around the page. <laughs> Joy, does, it, does it, being in the middle mean you don't have a preference? Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Andy's over by listserv. I just want to like, Andy's walking around. <laughs> I don't see where my name is. I would yeah. I would prefer WhatsApp. I don't know how to move it. I don't see my name. Oh, okay. You're there. Um and I don't see my name either. So I don't know. Uh, well, okay, well, so why don't um uh okay, I'm gonna say um WhatsApp in the in the chat. Okay. And if everybody could just love WhatsApp that wants to WhatsApp, just put your heart there. Just, you know, go to the face and put a heart. Um, and then we'll collect those names. And then um, I'm gonna put listserv. Um, and you could heart that. And then we'll see which gets the most votes. Um, and we'll uh, learn how to use the whiteboard better for another time. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom wants a listserv and Andy wants a WhatsApp. Um, so everybody put your heart, you know, just <laughs> stick a heart next to either WhatsApp or listserv. And if you don't vote, then you're going to go by the vote of another. But I don't see anybody voting. Oh, there we go. There's a two. We got Fern and Tom. Um, so just a reminder, next week, we're going to come together and we're going to talk about joy and celebration a little more. Uh, it looks like everybody's like either except either one. Mm -hmm. It looks like listserv has won. Um, <laughs> so we'll set a list up a listserv and invite everyone to it. Um, you know, you just, you can also put, if you don't, I, I mean, I have one for China's not our enemy. We get so much smarter, um, by being together and learning from each other and sharing tools and inspiration and everything. So we'll see if we can make that conversation happen in between the two, two weeks, you know, maybe you'll find things, you know, when you start talking about joy and celebration, then like it starts popping up in your life. Or when you talk about culture, it just starts popping up and here's things to share. So um, we'll get it started. Love you all. Thank you for all you're doing. I leave so inspired and nourished by being with you today. Wow. Thank you. Um, thank for you. Sharing. Raylene, thank you for joining us. I'm thank glad you found time. Um, how far are you from Detroit? You're in uh, about, uh, uh, three hours. Oh, that's far. Okay, I was going to say yeah. I'm in Detroit in uh, May, but that's a little ways away. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, so um, in two weeks, we'll see you again. Continue to nourish the peace economy for yourself, your community, and the planet. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Night, all. Bye. <laughs>